Hi. So the Champagne to Argent kits are eight weeks old now, and it is time for another weigh-in. Uh, we talked last time about weighing them roughly every two weeks, see what their growth curve's doing, and this way I can see as we go how the breed is comparing, matching up to my expectations, um, what, you know, what I expected to get when I brought the breed in, and then also, you know, tracking individuals, tracking potential future breeders selection, things of that nature. So here's the first of our four week old champagne, uh, I'm sorry, eight week old champagne to Argent kits. And I'm gonna put them on the scale, see how they're measuring up. And, and today after I weigh them, they're all going into an individual cage. Um, that way I will be able to track their weight as we go along as individuals you know before now they've all been together in the grow out cage and I've taken a couple of weights but they're not marked or anything and they obviously all look like twins so or quadruplets I guess uh, so you know that's not really telling me much as individuals now I've got them separated into cages um, that I've I number my cages so they're in grow out cages 8 9 11 and 12 and I'll be able to track them as we go along so let's see what we've got for this little guy. And we are at four pounds, 5.5 ounces. And this one is going in G8. So I'm just gonna track this down. So I'm gonna call it four pounds, six ounces. And according to our chart here at eight weeks old, a good rate of growth would be four pounds and an excellent rate of growth would be four and a quarter to five pounds. So we are solidly in that excellent rate of growth. And that's great. I'm gonna guess just from looking when I took this one out that this might be the smallest of them, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, looks can be deceiving sometimes. I'm also gonna see if I can get a quick sex on these. Should be pretty easy to see. And you can see too how, how much they're silvering out all of a sudden, their colors are changing. And you gotta push down a little more firmly than you think you need to, because if you don't push far enough, it's easy to think they're one thing and they end up being another. A lot of fur in this wintry little kit. Boy, if I could get the tail fur out of the way I might know here so this don't know you probably can't see it it will probably have to get on this better on another day this is looking like a doe to me um looking like we've got a taco and I will double check these sex you know when they're younger it can be a little difficult and always a good idea to check even seasoned breeders the ones who are being honest will with you will admit that they've sexed some they've come back two, four weeks later and sexed them and they had a magic sex change. And of course they didn't have a magic sex change. They were wrong on the sex change in the beginning. I can admit I've done it. I've seen lots of other very honest breeders saying they've done it too. It happens. So this little girl I'm gonna mark as a doe is going into cage G8 and we'll see how the others add up. Here's kit number two. I'm gonna turn this back on because I talked too long. Um, yep, this one's gonna go into cage G9. And we have four pounds, 8.5 ounces. So again, solidly in that excellent rate of growth. Round up to nine ounces. So our, our weights on these last time, two weeks ago, were three of them were three pounds, one ounce. One of them was two pounds, 13 ounces. So, you know, we've, we've had what, a 
pound, pound and a half of growth in two weeks. That's pretty awesome. These are these are showing to be some really good fast growing animals. I will say I expected them to be a little on the larger side because it was only a litter of four. So again, they got that good rich mother's milk. But I also was looking forward to this weigh in to see if they held once they started eating on their own and they didn't have the advantage of gorging on a lot of rich mother's milk that they didn't have to share. And, you know, clearly that is holding true. So this one looks like a boy. The, the trick is burrito boy, taco girl. Taco girl doesn't go as well as burrito boy, but that's how it goes. So when you, you know, press on either side, of the genitalia it should pop up and a male will look like a burrito and a girl will have a more taco shape to it i kind of don't think that i can get in close enough with the camera angle today but yeah i'm not i don't think i can today we can we can look at this another day um when that that's a focus but that's what we're going at this one is going into g9 and we have a buck We've got some silvering coming in on the butt. I don't know. Maybe, maybe other people aren't as amused by this as I am. I'm sure my family, who doesn't appreciate all my rabbit nerding, they go with it. They're okay, but, you know, it's more amusing to me than them. So let's see what our weight is on this one. And we have four pounds, four ounces. So this might actually be our smallest. Really like this scale. It's a digital, it's made for small animals. It actually has a feature on it where if they're moving too much, it will flash a paw. So it will tell you that it's not a very accurate weight because they were moving too much. So um, you know you should maybe take it again. Let's see if we can get a six. Yep, and this looks like another burrito boy. I probably just can't get in there with the camera angle, but that's a buck. So, buck, 4.4 ounces. You know, again, solid in the excellent growth range, even though it's so far the smallest of the four, but we've got one more to go. And this one's going in cage G11. Have the cages all set up with hay water, pellets, rest mat. Say hi to the camera. Say hi. See how cute you are. Are you gonna wiggle around a little more on me? We will see. Yep, and we've got four pounds, eight ounces on this one too. So, super happy with the rates of growth on these kits. Let's see if we can get a sex on this one. I'm gonna give you a second to calm down. Hi. Just chill. We're just chill. We're not in a rush. Oh, here's Aby, the cat. Come to see what's up. And this looks like a doe as well. Again, I will be double checking. Especially when it's winter, they've got so much fur kind of hiding things. 
um, you know, a couple weeks, they're going to size up by a lot and it's going to become more obvious as the testicles on the box drop. So we said dough going into G12. So we've got um, two bucks, two does, which is awesome. If I do decide to hold some of these as breeders, I've, I've got options there. Um, I do, I am pretty confident that both the Champagne to Argent does are now bred, um, you know, persevered with their reluctance and then one day all of a sudden just you know snap we got three or more good fall offs on both of them out of two unrelated pairs so that's awesome that gets us well on our way to um, establishing some unrelated breeding stock to start selecting from or selling or whatever i want to do with them So that's that. Now, maybe I can show you. I'm using, this is a weight tracker that I designed myself. It is on my website, um, homemadehomestead.com. I think we have some, some links and I think we have it also on meatrabbits.org. But this is, I don't know how well you can see it. I have a litter ID. So this is PS1. It's Peony and Sunny's first litter. Peony's the doe, born October 7th, 2024. Their breed is Champagne to Argent. The buck is sunny. How many were in the litter was four. Um, a note here that that was following high summer heat. Also her first litter. So, you know, again, we've talked about that before. I'm, I'm not unhappy with the size of the litter given those, those um, results. And then, you know, here's where you can ID or use a cage ID. I've moved them to the cage ID and given them their individual weights. These were just group weights before. That's why they're a little... Um, you know, they don't have the ID but I, because I do not have um, anything to personally identify each one of them. So that's where we're at. Tells at the top, you know, a few other things. Just list some of these growth rates here for easy, quick reference. Um, you know, with the good and excellent growth rates and two-week intervals up to 24 weeks. The intervals do space out a little bit more. At 12 weeks, we go to 16 weeks, 20 weeks, 24 weeks. And my target, so this is printed on mine, but I'm this in the downloadable printable PDF that's available on the website, this is empty so you can fill in your own. So mine is 16 weeks, seven to eight pounds by 16 weeks. We'll see how these guys size up and if they're hitting that early, we might um, consider there how we wanna manage these champagnes going forward. Although if I did get into saving any pelts, then I'm going to want to go the 16 weeks regardless because the pelts are not going to be good for tanning under 16 weeks. So let's see if we can go over here. I'll show you where these guys, their new homes are. We got a lot of empty cages last uh, around because we did a recent harvest. Um, so this is it. Here's the four. I've kept them all in a group for my own easy reference. And you know, Got the cage tags here with their litter number on them, cage number, so that when I take them out and I fill in those those sheets again, I'll be able to, you know, know who's who, keep track of them until, you know, I decide to maybe tattoo them if I did. I'm thinking these are probably going to be uh, harvested as grow outs, but maybe not. Um, so I wouldn't bother tattooing them. I don't generally tattoo myself, but that also would give some... You know, it does give me a way to still track in case at some point somebody wanted tattoos or pedigrees or anything of that nature. So, here we go. I don't name kits and rabbits until I've decided that I'm keeping them. You know, um, and that's just one. It's just, you know, you're, you're running through a lot of rabbits. So... It's part that, but it's more a, a matter of how attached you get to individuals and things with names are pseudo pets, sort of, you know, um, you know, of course they're, they're um, production pets in this instance, but things without names are, are food. And that's the reality of the situation. And if you have kids, you know, there's a lot of people talking and this is a topic we can take on another day. I have raised four kids, all young adults now, all great kids. Um, all involved in this as well. 
I'll eat the rabbit. We've done chickens, all sorts of things. And the one thing that I always say when people ask these comments on the forums is give kids credit. Kids are more resilient than adults are. So, you know, be upfront with them. Um, you know, make it clear who is going to stick around, like a breeder that's gonna live longer and who is not. And then, you know, Alyssa at BHA Rabbitry, she addresses this too. There's always new cute fuzzy kits coming up behind. They're gonna fall in love with them, get tired of the others. I'm sorry, that might sound cold, but it, it is kind of a fact of the matter. And let's be honest about it. How many people even got pet rabbits that last two months and then the novelty wears off. So at least when the novelty wears off with these guys, they have a good, solid, respectable use. And don't just sit around a lonely rabbit that hopefully someone remembers to feed in water. Um, so I don't want to get too off, uh, much off on that tangent, but that's our champagnes for today. You can see they're all in a new cage, happy, healthy, checking things out. Uh, they can still see each other. Not that that's really a huge issue, but it does help now that they've been separated a little bit, I guess. Um, and that's it. That's our way in. I'm feeling great about these rabbits because, you know, they are looking great. So all things good. We'll come back in a couple weeks and see what they look like at 10 weeks.